Our next guest is the best-selling author behind smash hits like To All the Boys I've Loved Before, The Summer I Turned Pretty, and her latest success, XO Kitty. She's also both creator and co-showrunner on the wildly popular adaptations of both. Let's take a look at one of them. The school mom went to is the same one day it goes to. I applied to KISS and I got in. Jenny Han, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So following the highly acclaimed All the Boys I've Loved Before, now comes Exo Kitty. Tell people what they can expect. Well, uh, you know, I think Kitty is the youngest of all the song sisters um, from the movies. And she's always been my secret favorite. because um, She's sort of based on my little sister. Um, and so she gets her own adventure. She gets to go off to Korea um, to an international boarding school. And there's a mystery. And then there's her first love and all kinds of drama and romance. And then you also have uh, The Summer I Turned Pretty, which is returning for its second season. What can we expect there, in particular with the love triangle? Well, I will say it's heating up. <laughs> <laughs> As love triangles tend yes, to do. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, and there is also a lot of drama. Uh, yeah, the first three episodes dropped last week, and so we're heading into episode four this week. You're no stranger to seeing your uh, writing turned into these mega hits, whether it's the series or whether it's movies. I've even heard it referred to as Jenny Han Universe. What do you make of seeing actually what goes from your head on the big screen? I mean, to me, it's just like a great extension of storytelling um, in a way that expands um, the story in, in ways that you can't do um, with a book because it's visual and you get to work with so many talented actors and um, just all levels of, of the crew. So I love that because as a novelist, it's a pretty solitary endeavor. You're kind of on your own. So I like being a part of a team. And, and quite often you've really focused on these themes of, of first love, heartache, the, the journey into adulthood. Where do you get that particular fascination on, on those three subjects in particular? I think I've always just been very um, attuned to adolescence in part because I think that first times are just so compelling. Um, and when you think back, I think, on, on your life, you really remember those, those first times because everything is so fresh and you haven't really had a heartbreak yet. Um, and so you don't really know that you'll be able to come out of it, you mm -hmm. know? And so that's what makes it so, I think, heartbreaking and emotional. You have Lola Tong, Lana Condor. You've been able to turn uh, major, many people into these megawatt stars. Uh, when you look at, at what you're doing, as far as being able to give, in particular, Asian women these large platforms, your reaction when you're able to see, like, yeah, I kind of did that as a result of my adaptation. That, that happened because of, of my work. I, for me, it's very moving. Um, you know, I think growing up, I didn't really get to see that kind of representation on the screen. So to be a part of bringing that to life for younger generations, um, it's a real privilege. You're, of course, a member of the Writers Guild uh, of America. We have uh, the writers on strike, the actors on strike. How do you anticipate that this all will end? And, and do you have any idea of the timeline? I think it's up to the studios. I think that um, I think we're all hoping they'll come back to the table and negotiate so we can have fair compensation. I think that's the hope. And, and you think that will happen sooner or later? There I mean, are many people at home who are, are <laughs> desperately wondering. I mean, for me, I would love it to, because obviously I want to go back to work, uh, go back to making TV. But I think um, the deal has to be right and um, it has to be fair. And I think that's what we're waiting for, is to get that chance to um, get back in there. What do you think the biggest sticking point is? I think that one of them is um, residuals. Is, is, you know, the industry has changed so much. And I'm new to TV. I've only been doing it a couple of years now. But, you know, I think anyone can see that now with streamers, um, it's just a very different uh -huh. ball game. And so then the contract should really reflect that. Jenny Han, we thank you so much for coming with us in studio. Exo Kitty is streaming now on Netflix, and you can watch the second season of The Summer I Turned Pretty on Prime Video. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.